Hello, everybody, and welcome to this Got Health Talk. Uh, today, we'll be focusing on the topic of just one, why the holidays can trigger alcohol use disorder and how to stay in control. Today's presenters are Carrie Leffler, Advanced KSAC at the Adolescent and Young Adult Clinic at Strong Recovery, Abigail Walker, Certified Recovery Peer Advocate at Strong Recovery, and Reed Wojcik, Certified Peer Recovery Advocate, Credentialed Eating Disorder Recovery Coach, and KSAC T. Today's questions we will explore for one, and find out why the holidays can be a difficult time. For two, learn coping strategies from the team. And three, discover the importance of their shared experience in developing patient relationships. All right. Hi, everybody. Um, so some of the things that I am hearing um, as a counselor from the people that I'm working with about why the holidays can be difficult for them um, are complicated family dynamics, whether that's, you know, their, their history with their family or current dynamics, uh, the normal, normalization of substance use related to celebrations. Um, we see it a lot just in society, you know, advertisements, TV shows, movies, alcohol, alcohol, alcohol. Um, and a lot of people that I work with, their families, even if they don't regularly drink alcohol the holidays is the time that that they do um family not knowing about a person's journey with their substance use or recovery that's a big one that i see i'm working with someone now who is struggling because they have been working on changing their relationship with alcohol and they haven't really shared this with some of their extended family and usually when they're with their family for the holidays that has involved drinking and they don't know how to tell their family that they're trying to not drink. Um, they're afraid of judgment. They're afraid of not fitting in with their family. They're afraid of missing out. Um, so that's a big one. And then missing loved ones and just the general pressure or expectations that are associated with the holidays. Um, I think that a lot of people portray the holidays as like, you know, a great time of year and this is when you're with your family and everything's like you know all fun and celebrations but that's not the case for a lot of people a lot of people are, are missing people that they would like to be with for for the holidays um so yeah those are the big ones that i'm seeing on my end as a counselor some of the coping strategies um, that i encourage the people that i'm working with to utilize are to be in contact with people who either understand what they're going through or if they don't directly understand at least know what they're going through so that they have somebody that they can talk with um, setting boundaries if possible so if someone is going to an event where there's going to be alcohol um, and they can set a boundary such as you know bringing their own car or um, saying they're only going to stay for an hour or two. Um, I would encourage that. And having an exit strategy, like even if you can't drive yourself to the event, having a friend maybe that, you know, could come pick you up or having Uber on your phone, something like that. So you have a, an exit strategy, um, even coming up with an excuse, whether it's true or not of, I got to get out of here. I've, I've got to go do this. Um, taking time away at family functions. Sometimes it can be overwhelming in general and just being able to take some time away, go into a different room, go outside can help kind of relieve some of the anxiety and stress that people may be feeling. Um, another one that I encourage people to look into or consider is around the clock mutual aid meetings. Um, I think our peers are going to talk a little bit more about that, so I won't get too much into that. And then Limiting exposure to toxic holiday positivity. So that's a big one for me. Um, that kind of ties into what I was saying uh, a couple minutes ago about how a lot of people view the holidays as like, you know, the best time of the year. And it can be it can be overwhelming for a lot of people, especially if you're not really feeling the holidays uh, for whatever reason. You know, maybe don't go to that event that's going to be really celebrating the holiday if, if you're not feeling it. So. And then the way that I develop relationship with patients here is honestly just kind of giving them a place where they can be heard without judgment. Um, I try to normalize for people that <laughs> the holiday season is a struggle for some. Um, it's not the best time of the year for everybody. 
And I try to encourage them to be compassionate with themselves and their situation. Um, a lot of people that I work with feel like there's something wrong with them for not being excited about the holidays for whatever reason. So just giving them a place where they feel like they can talk about it. And uh, yeah, like I said, normalize that it's not always the best, the best time of the year for everybody. Hello. Um, so difficult times and what others can do. Um, the holidays can be super stressful um, just because of everyone is drinking, the normalization of drinking and parties, holiday parties. Um, I can highlight the disconnect in the family due to the conflict caused by drinking. Uh, for me, I definitely would walk into family holidays and feel that everyone's eyes were on me. They were watching to see if I was under the influence or seeing if I was going to be try to sneak a drink or um, <clears throat> and that just caused a disconnect and it just made it feel very uh, I guess lonely which is the next point um, that I just was disconnected from the family that I wanted to be part of. Um, guilt for not being able to provide gifts for loved ones. I definitely, um, the hardships of my addiction and drinking caused a lot of financial hardship and the holidays um, would just highlight that. It just, it's, it feels like it can highlight all the negative effects of the substance use. And even after an early recovery, um, it was still difficult to pick up all the pieces, um, you know, and family, I definitely encourage my family to, uh, to, to attend Al-Anon and al meetings so that they can help support and understand my addiction and my drinking, um, and so, so we could support each other. And my coping strategies, early recovery, and even now just prioritizing self-care. Um, definitely leaning on sober support, surrounding uh, myself with people who understand uh, my recovery and that can be a voice of reason when I'm panicking or trying to avoid situations and trying to isolate. Um, I've created new traditions with my family, with my children. Um, the disconnect in the family sometimes can't be healed. Can't Everything can't be fixed just um as soon as you put a drink down. So creating new traditions just helped us feel like we're together again and having that um, that feeling of being together without having to, to revisit all the old stuff. And then uh, I find volunteering helps me get out of myself, be there for other people, see um, and support other people who are either in my situation or um, just even with getting along with other people who volunteer. It's just... Um, that unity, that dynamic of having that common goal of being of service to other people. Um, and I definitely use what I don't like about my situation now to motivate me and to fuel me to want to do make the changes that I want for this year, the coming year, and also for the next holiday season. So my goal, if I can't do something this year with the financials or whatever it may be, then I have that, that goal for next year to start making those changes. And going to free community events definitely um, helps offset the cause and still gets you feeling like you're in the holiday spirit, but not having to go to Christmas parties or um, celebrating the way I used to. Um, peers build connections. We build connections through mutual understanding, shared identity, and shared experience. Create a sense of belonging, and these connections help our clients stay engaged, and sometimes it can reduce relapse. All right. So my main points are talking about how family stress um, can promote, you know, additional um, use or drinking throughout the holidays, um, potentially lack of support. So if somebody maybe is traveling for the holidays, um, doesn't have a supportive system with their family um, or in their own community where they do live recovery, that can be really difficult. Um, traveling for the holidays or not being able to um, this means potential stressors related to the cost of travel, the feeling of having to travel, the pressure to travel, 
Um, and also not being able to afford it maybe, or setting boundaries with family members so that you can take care of your recovery. Um, potentially, um, the holidays can also bring around um, an increase in alcohol use because of how normalized it is in society. Um, you know, I tend to see that more people tend to drink around the holiday time because it's more acceptable. Um, you know, it's a time of celebration and people maybe uh, justify it a bit more. Um, and it could be more tempting for people that aren't maybe that don't have supports or, um, you know, are around family members that don't know, like Carrie touched on. Um, also, the holidays may be associated with poor experiences in the past, and that can bring on potential stress and anxiety from previous holidays. You know, if you had a, you know, maybe a blackout, you know, three years before at a holiday party, and that has brought a lot about, um, brought up a lot of guilt and shame, you know, that might be something you associate the holidays with, um, or possibly, you know, a family argument or a loved one passing away or a friend passing away. Um, a lot of things can happen during the holidays, um, you know, even though it's deemed to be a celebration time of day. Um, also thinking about, you know, unique ways that you can, um, still have, you know, a fun sober time. Um, even if you are living recovery and are actively sober and actively working on your recovery, um, things that can be helpful is maybe going to the movies. There's constantly movies, um, playing throughout the holiday times. Um, you know, there's, um, always listings online. There's discounted movies all over, um, like Abby said, volunteering can be really helpful, too, to get outside yourself, um, be around a different crowd as well, um, maybe outside of your family and um, out and about still doing something without having that stress of um, paying the price of holiday time. Um, engaging in different art projects. You know, I always tell my patients that there's um, the Creative Wellness Center locally, they do lots of different um, holiday, you know, art pieces and paintings and gatherings. And, you know, the Dollar Tree has tons of different art supplies, too. So thinking about getting art on a budget can also be stressful. So, you know, taking what you can get at the same time. Um, attending round the clock meetings as well, like Carrie touched on. There's constantly um 24 hour um and meeting every hour at the mac building on christmas eve so that's something we're always telling our patients to do and ourselves you know if we're in a pickle or we want that extra support um you know it's a place you can be around other sober individuals you know warm coffee there tends to be treats and um it's a safe place to be you know I was there at one point in my life a few years ago where I was at around the clock meetings just to so, just so I wouldn't drink that day. Um, and creating your own sober traditions too. You know, just because you did X, Y, and Z while you were drinking and an act of addiction doesn't mean you have to do them now. You know, you can make your own traditions and still celebrate in a fun way and how you want to celebrate, not how you feel like you should celebrate. Um and also what can be quite helpful is creating maybe like a recovery group chat with safe and sober friends, you know, checking in with each other, you know, saying like, hey, I'm struggling or, um, hey, you want to go to a meeting, checking in. I find that really helpful, just sending a quick text to somebody and or message and saying, you know, checking in on you, thinking of you, you know, I think the holidays can be hard for everyone and um, a different type of way, but I think that's when community can really come in handy during that time. <clears throat> and also the importance of shared experiences with developing patient relationships. So personally, like as a peer specialist and being um, in recovery myself, like I'm always just really transparent with my patients about the reality of holiday time and early sobriety and what to expect. Um, you know, I, I tend not to sugarcoat anything. I tend to, you know, my experience is definitely different from their experience, but telling them how um, I navigated like holiday time and early sobriety can be helpful for those that are experiencing it for the first time. Um, you know, sharing that can be helpful so that they can maybe use the same tools that I use that help me. 
um, you know, we develop a plan to focus on, you know, so if someone is going to a holiday party or maybe going away for the weekend with their family, you know, we set a plan, we maybe look up some meetings in the area, um, set up a sober support like list so that people can reach out to them. And, um, you know, like Carrie was saying, um, coming out with an exit plan as well. And also identifying what works best for them, not what they should do or what others are doing. That kind of touches on what I was saying about um, everyone's experience going to be different with the holidays. And just because someone's in recovery doesn't mean it has to be difficult. You know, some people experience the holidays even better in recovery and some come to their own struggles. So just because you are in recovery doesn't mean this will happen to you. It doesn't mean it's not going to happen to the next person. So I think I want to highlight that as well, because you know, we can make it our own pathway, um, not what we think we should do or what others are doing. So focusing more on, you know, being person-centered with yourself and um, reaching out for help when you need to. Very good. Thank you. Well said, everybody. Uh, this last page is for resources. Uh, the QR code at the bottom right is scannable. So if you want to have this accessible at other times beyond these slides, you can. It will be embedded into the Facebook link as well. Um, these are local resources that the peers and the counselors use here at Strong Recovery. So please feel free to take advantage of those at your convenience.